right. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, wherever it is that you are listening from. This is Follow the Money, brought to you by uh, Naira Metrics, in proud partnership with UBA, uh, United Bank for Africa. Yes, so uh, it's been a very, very busy week uh, for uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, busy week for the economy as well. I think during the week we saw... Uh, we all digested the GDP report that had just dropped the uh, Nigerian economy growing by 3.19%. However, uh, the stock market had its own own ideas, right? So uh, we begin quickly. It's going to be a bumper day, of course. Um, a bumper episode, I, I beg your pardon. Uh, we have a lot of stuff uh, to talk about today. Number of results that came out that I, I want to get into. Uh, so yeah, so strap on that seat belt as you, wherever it is you are, whether you're you're in your car on your way to work or you're probably at work or you're streaming from any podcast platform. Remember, you can always listen to this um, this show on any podcast platform. There are always recorded versions of the show, previous versions as well, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, even on YouTube, where, where everywhere, so long as it's online, shout, we're there. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, busy week. Uh, so... Uh, but before I start, uh, what is this about NNPC that I heard? I mean, like, I, I mean, just like you, I saw that news yesterday, and and it was like a, it still sounded like a bombshell, even though it was something a lot of us always said. Uh, I mean, the media had reported that for months uh, that looks like these guys are broke, or looks like these guys don't have the money. I mean, but come up with all sorts of, uh, you know, how people try to just deflect stories and deflect things, but eventually. Uh, looks like they've waved the white flag. And now NNPC is saying, well, we really can't afford to pay, uh, you know, for X, Y, Z reasons and blah, 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 blah. Inside g I also got is that there are cargoes that are waiting in the high sea and they don't pay those guys. They are not going to deliver. And so, uh, and these guys are owed hundreds of tens of millions of dollars. And I don't think NNPC has that money to pay. So it kind of makes me think that there could be um, a, a fair price increase you know, somewhere down the line. I kind of suspect, I mean, like, where are they going to get that money from? That's what it kind of, that's kind of like what it sounds like. So I really don't know where this economy is going to, but man, when that happens, these things tend to affect stocks. And that's why, you know, I kind of like had to bring that up. It, it would affect stocks because, I mean, companies are going to now have to pay uh, a lot more for transportation, even if, even if most companies end up paying uh, you end up using diesel, you know, as backup power. But uh, fuel prices, as we've seen, tend to increase inflation. This same inflation that we've managed to bring down a little bit uh, could could be, you know, on track for another hike uh, if, you know, fuel subsidy is further removed. I mean, the claim has been removed, but we all know it's back somewhere. Uh, NNPC just confirmed that. So uh, these are things, these are potential headwinds, and maybe maybe investors are already seeing this because. The Nigerian All Share Index closed the month of August in negative territory, uh, making it back-to-back -back losses uh, because it did close July uh, with a drop 2.28%, and then followed that up in August with a drop of 1.22%. Uh, so this is the first time stocks have fallen uh, consecutively for two months uh, since April 2023. So typically, we've had a very good run. Even if you had a little bit of uh, a drop, stocks tend to now do better the next month. But we've seen this consecutive drop now happen in June, uh, in July, uh, and now in August. Uh, now, what is also a little bit disturbing uh, is that the All Share Index, uh, which, if you all recall, I mean, like, if you go and listen to my March episodes of Follow the Money, you would see when I was saying, wow, stocks are flying, because stocks was hitting, like, 39% year-to-date in March. But guess what? It's now 29% year to date. So Nigeria All Share Index, which was the best performing index in the world at some point, and the best performing asset class in Nigeria for quite a while, uh, is now struggling below inflation because it's not 29%. Inflation, we all know, is slightly over 30%. And so, uh, but even at that, it's still competing with you know risk-free treasury bills, which. Uh, the yield often comes to maybe 28% or 27%. Um, some will say 29%. But uh, stocks are still locking in there. And I don't know, maybe there just could be some headwinds down the line with some of the things that we're saying, so that we're hearing. But nevertheless, despite how bad stocks had been, there were still major gainers and losers. And I go, I'm going to get to them uh, in a bit. 
Um, but before I get to gainers and losers, just also looking at the broader index, I was asking myself, what, what, were, what, what were the reasons? What sort of drove stocks down? Was it because of you know the bank recapitalization? Could that have been the major reason why investors maybe are just maybe like cycling out of stocks? I, I really don't think so. Uh, but then I, I looked at another data and I'm saying, perhaps, maybe there's a link here. So what's the link? I can't think because a lot of investors, especially retail investors, are moving money towards buying you know, uh, public offers, uh, right issues. Well, then that money is getting locked up. So that money is not like it's in the market where there's a lot of liquidity and then it moves. It's getting locked up because that money is going to the banks. It's not like it's going to the market per se. So it's going to those banks uh, so that they can reinvest in their own businesses. So, And that money is likely going to be locked up for a while because public offers do take time before the proceeds are now available uh, to the banks, in this case, uh, to... Uh, start to spend. And so I kind of feel that might be the reason. I mean, think about it, public offers that we have at the moment, it's probably over close to a trillion, even more than a trillion in terms of the ones that are currently being sold. And so that is a significant amount of money uh, to suck out of, out of, you know, out of the market. And, and so that could be a reason. But then if you look at it from the point of view of data, right, and you, you see that uh, the major drivers of the fall that we've seen in August as well as in July, where was the industrial goods index? Yeah, so the industrial good, goods index is the broader index that covers, you know, industrial companies, like manufacturing companies of Nigeria and, and like the major ones. So not, not so, so you got the industrial index and you also got the consumer goods index, but this is industrial goods index. That's where you see the likes of Dangri Cement, Boa Cement, you know, Lafarge, like really industrial companies. And those guys have seen uh, their collective... Uh, market capitalization dropped by a whopping 13 percent, um, you know, um, it, during the month, month to date. So they're falling 13 percent, and that has really been the major driver. <clears throat> excuse me, for 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 the for the fall of the exchange. And if you dig deep deeper, you find out that even the suits, the suits, which at Naira Metrics we call the stocks worth over one trillion. In case you didn't know, yeah, there there are not a lot of stocks that are worth over one trillion naira. Uh, so we there is an exclusive club uh, of stocks, and these stocks essentially uh, cover almost thirty percent of the entire market capitalization of the Nigerian stocks. So like the entire value of the Nigerian stock exchange. And this is where you have heavyweights like uh, Dangote Cement, MTN, Airtel, Seplat, Gerigo, Transco Power. You know, that's where you have like the heavyweight companies uh, in that class. And, <clears throat> excuse me, those stocks also suffer a little bit. And, and the ones that really suffered uh, were the likes of um, um, MTN, Dangote Cement, and Boa. Those three alone make up twenty seven percent. So you can you can imagine. So if you add the others, did I, the others are pro- takes them to I think over forty percent or thereabout of of, of the entire uh, exchange. So um, MTN, you know, we all know why MTN has struggled a little bit. They dropped ten percent, of course, because of the challenges with with FX. So they dropped like ten percent, and then um, Boa Cement also dropped by twenty point five percent market market valuation and then of course um dangle the cement 90 percent so those were the major drivers and that's why you see the nigerian stock say did not perform well uh collectively but that doesn't mean you didn't have stocks in there that probably did well during the month and there were quite a significant number of them that did well during the month so if you have the stocks in your portfolio and you don't know you know, a lot of you just have stocks and you don't check. You don't know. You don't. You can go and ask your stockbroker, do I have these stocks? Or how are they performing? In case you don't know, or maybe your stockbroker sends you all those daily reports they send and monthly reports on your portfolio that you don't bother reading, you might want to pay attention to the list that I'm about to read now. So I'm about to tell you the stocks that did very well in July. In August, I beg your pardon, in August. So that... In case you want to take your profits, take it. Don't say, I didn't tell you. So starting from the bottom to the top. Dark Communications, this stock has struggled for years. But there's a major reorganization going on in that company. Uh, last week, they basically asked some of their board members or they got some of their board members retired. And then they have fresh new ones that are coming. I did talk about it last week. And so that stock has gained, that stock gained 43% 
in one month alone beat the entire index itself. Dark communication. So if you've got dark communication stock, you might want to check your portfolio. The next is my favorite, Okumo Oil. That also gained 43% last month. So if you've got a Okumo Oil in your portfolio, you do want to check it as well. Sovereign Insurance gained 51% last month. If you're somebody who has insurance stocks, you want to check uh, Sovereign Insurance. Veritas Capital gained 53% as, as well. Academy Press, another penny stock. That one gained 58.7%. Uh, I know people who are penny stock gurus, so a lot of penny stock gurus would have cleaned out quite well, um, uh, you know, this month or last month. Etana Oil, an oil and gas company downstream, uh, a lot of things happening in that company. Uh, they gained 72.5%. There is an article on Etana Oil on Narimetrics. You might want to check them out so that you find out what's driving it. Deep Capital, I remember this stock very well in the back in the days of 2008. I don't know how they still exist and what's going on there, but... It looks like they are on the up because they gained 72.5% last month. And then we're now going to some of the major ones. Total Energies, one of my favorite companies as well. Been doing pretty well. Owned the stock for a bit now. And this stock has been a flyer for the last three years. A flyer. I mean, this stock used to be 100 naira at some point. Yeah, I think probably 100 naira the first time I, I bought the stock. Now, this stock is 673 naira. But sure, it gained 73% last month alone. Total Energies, downstream oil and gas company. So, uh, so when you see all these total filling stations, they are the guys who own those total filling stations, and uh, they are doing incredibly well year after year. Profit growth for at least since COVID. That's what they've been doing. So they grew seven three percent. And of course, you got Julius Berger as well in there this year. This looks like this government has been very good for Julius Berger because uh, the last eight years has been a struggle for them uh, just to maintain some kind of you know you know stability, but. Uh, since these guys, you know, get, came into power, Joe's Berger has been going up, and that's also reflective in their share price because their share price is now one seventy naira. Look, I still remember when Joe's Berger was twenty five naira per share, but it's now one seventy naira per share, gaining seventy four percent in August alone. And of course, you now have uh, other spending stocks, IMG and Alt, Alti, uh, Brisco gaining one twenty one percent and four hundred four percent respectively. Alt, Alti Brisco actually is a car maintenance company and they also sell cars so not really one of those stocks that are that's very heavy capitalized on the exchange not a lot of liquidity going in there but something is just popping around because the share price just keeps going up i'm trying to figure out what is driving that stock and why is it going up i just gained 414 percent in one month and of course the number one stock in nigeria today in terms of share price appreciation is no other than owando we've been telling owando stories for the last for the last few weeks. I'm sure you've all been following all the good news happening there. So, and I know that a lot of you out there who probably own Wando stocks or who, had, who has had Wando stocks for years and don't know what to do with it. Well, Wando is now 76.9 naira per share because it's gained 435.9% in August alone. I kid you not. The stock has more than quadrupled. No, well, almost quadrupled. Four times. Almost four times. So, this is not something that you see every day. And this is not just one penny stock. This is a company that you know that you can physically see their assets and you know what they are doing. And so, this company has grown by at least almost four times a year to date. So, a month to date rather. Just this month alone. This month alone. In fact, Orlando came into August with a share price of 14 naira for the couple. That's how it came to August. And it's August ended with the share price at 76 naira. So, I mean, for those who still don't believe in stocks, well, that's it. But uh, of course, on the flip side, we do have losers as well. Uh, but most of the losers here are mostly um, mostly penny stocks. Penny stocks are, um, are mostly losers. So I'm not going to dwell into uh, some of them. So that has been uh, the all share index uh, for the first half, uh, for, the, for the month of August. And I'm sure if you have stocks in there, uh, you might want to check them. So, uh, we're going to be back in a bit. And when I'm back, I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the results that came out. PZ, uh, PZ came out. I'm going to talk a little bit about PZ. We're going to talk about QTX. I'm going to talk about Zenit Bank. Uh, and, of course, I'm going to close with uh, the top 10 stock brokers in Nigeria as of July. You don't want to miss that because I'm sure you all know your stock broker. So, this is for stock broker. Let's see the stock brokers that are the best performing 
for the month of July. Be right back. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is Follow the Money, uh, brought to you by Naya Metrics in partnership, in proud, in proud partnership with UBA, uh, one of the largest banks, uh, of course, in Africa. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff together with UBA over the next few weeks, so I'm sure you want to pay attention to that. We've got a lot of stuff uh, coming up uh, in partnership with them, so uh, we're very excited about that. All right, so back to the show. Uh, PZ, PZ soap manufacturer. I mean, PZ has been going through a lot of challenges uh, in the last um, few few months. Uh, uh, of course, we all know what most manufacturing companies in Nigeria are going through, but they did push out their results uh, um, during the week, and um, they posted a loss after tax uh, for the financial year and in May. 2024. Uh, so, uh, PZ's year end is usually May. So, I mean, conventionally, most companies have their year end in December. Uh, some have it in June. So, you can actually have a year end anytime. Uh, so, PZ zone is May uh, 2024. And uh, they did report a loss after tax of 76 billion naira uh, for the financial year end. Uh, of course, uh, if you go further down into their numbers, revenue was 152 billion so i mean they're still selling uh, in fact revenues was up 34 uh, percent we did see that across most companies because they tend to adjust prices uh, so revenue is really not the problem uh, cost of sale also kind of increased from uh, 81 billion to 98 billion uh, gross profit uh, was 54 billion so they did post uh, a gross profit but where the challenge is and that's what we've seen with most companies is foreign exchange losses and so uh, PZ recorded a freaking 157.9 billion in FX losses. That's just a significant amount of money to take in. I mean, compare that to what they did the same period last year of 4.9 billion. So basically wiped out everything they've done. In fact, the, the FX losses wiped out the entire revenue of the company. So they just like basically just made rubbish of every effort these guys have put in, you know, for the year. Again, revenue was 152 billion, and then FX losses 154 billion. It's just incredible stuff, and so that of course made them end with an operating loss of 127 billion, and of course loss after tax of 76 billion. So essentially, uh, the entire you know share capital wiped out because of FX losses. That like everything is wiped out, and so shareholders of, of PZ must be really because PZ had wanted to delist, right? Uh, but your shareholders pushed back and said, we don't like the price, we don't like the price. Don't gonna... But hey, look at what has happened now. They, they, like, now you have nothing left, right? So the, like, the entire shareholder fund is wiped out. So the company now really, so is either the company takes in capital or the debtors just take over the company because it's essentially like completely gone, right? As as a company, it doesn't mean that they won't still be in operation, but in terms of the balance sheet, balance sheet is just sort of damaged um, for now, uh, hoping that the company can get out uh, get out of this uh, as quickly uh, as possible. But that has been the story uh, for uh, for you know FX uh, related issues as as regards PZ. Uh, I don't know if you know their shareholders are going to come back uh, to the table to discuss uh, you know potential delisting as they wanted to do before. I recall you know back then I, I think it was even in March when PZ said that they wanted to um, they were thinking of delisting. Uh, but you know, uh, try to allay concerns of their shareholders, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't budge. And so, since last year, it's basically been you know just nothing. Nobody has said anything, and um, now their results are out. I don't know how uh, investors are going to take this as we move on. Uh, share price is still twenty one naira per share. Uh, at the point when PZ wanted to exit, uh, PZ was offering shareholders I think twenty three naira uh, per share. So it's kind of basically just been stuck. At uh, 21 naira per share, uh, so I don't know where this goes from here. But with this results, I think everybody's eye will clear, like they say. So we quickly move on to Kutix. Kutix, uh, a cable maker, cable manufacturing maker. In case you never heard of that company, is based somewhere in Nairi, uh in Anambra State. Um, this company has been in operation for years because I've, I've known them since nineties, actually, since my university days. And so it's interesting to see that they're still there operating. And revenue was up for the quarter, sixty-three uh, percent to three point five billion naira. And of course, uh, operating profit also up one thirty four percent to four twenty two uh, million naira. Pre tax profit uh, for Kutix, uh, Kutix pre tax profit also up uh, to 330 percent. Uh, so Kutix seems 
uh, to be doing well in terms of numbers and no surprises that their share price did well at some point during the year, <clears throat> even though it's falling back. There was a time Kutik's share price rose uh, to almost six naira uh, per share, but it's down to earth now at three naira per share. Uh, but this is one I think we want to watch because if they continue with these sort of numbers, they're beginning. I also try to break it down: cables and wires. Uh, they made two point eight billion naira selling cables and wires alone. Uh, that's compared to one point seven billion same period last year. And then armored cable sales uh, was also up from three seven to one million to six six to six million. So it kind of looks like a company that uh, is doing well in terms of what it does. And of course, we all know that. Cables and wires is what everybody uses in Nigeria. So, interesting to see how this company continues uh, to scale. Next on the block was Zenit Bank, Nigeria's largest bank uh, by um, market capitalization or by profits. Uh, they did post their second quarter result finally, uh, audited accounts. And uh, interesting numbers in here. Profit topped $406 billion in the second quarter alone. I'm not saying the whole year. Second quarter alone did 406 billion in pre-tax profit uh, net interest income 408 billion up to 138 percent uh net interest after impairments down 56 percent to 449 billion that was what really gave me a bit of concern because i was wondering what so they, they did well when it came to net interest income but i think zenit bank uh, may have strategically uh taken a huge impairment for the second quarter the payment for the second quarter alone was 359 billion like, just imagine that that is essentially what you call a loan loss so that would have that may have been a cautionary step to take because they think profits are quite large it could also be for tax reasons i don't know but it was quite surprising seeing that 359 billion in impairment loss and i also hear there's not going to be an investor call so they probably might not explain what happened here uh, anytime soon uh, nevertheless uh, they made up for the impairment loss with huge profits from fx as usual so they got trading gains of about gross of about 871 billion and net of 795 billion so they did very well with fx gains and that essentially helped buffer the losses that they incurred from bad loans so uh Zenit bank is on our based on our trajectory on from what we can postulate uh it's likely on track to hit one trillion in profits at the end of this year uh it's a race between Zenit and gt so i don't know which bank is going to hit one trillion first uh you still have uba by the way Back there, UBA is coming, so UBA could also surprise us. And of course, uh, you still have FBN as well. So the Fugas, essentially, not sure about Access Bank, though, not, not, not sure about Access Bank, but I think uh, between uh, Zenit, um, uh, GT, UBA, you could see uh, the first one trillion uh, profit bank in Nigeria. I could see that happen. Uh, as we go on. Uh, so uh, that's Zenit. And Zenit, of course, is giving the shareholders one naira per share uh, in dividend. So if you're a shareholder of Zenit, expect uh, a one naira uh, dividend anytime soon. I'm going to be telling you when uh, that is going to happen. All right. So we go into uh, top 10 stockbrokers in Nigeria as of July. Now, why does this matter? This matters because you want your stockbroker to be, you know, among the best in the country. And, and, Stockbrokers are measured in terms of the value of transactions that they've done and the volume, right? So, but in this particular case, we're going to look at the value, right? So, the value and the thing with value is that it could just they could only just maybe just have one 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 major account that is giving them all this value. But at the end of the day, that's what we want to check. So, do you have your stockbroker in this list of top ten stockbrokers? So, we're going to start from the bottom and to the top. And so number 10 for the month of July, year to date. Year to date is what we're looking at. We're not looking at the month, year to date. So like all around this year, uh, Chapel Hill, Denham Securities, uh, number 10 uh, with transaction value of about 92 billion in 2024 alone. Uh, so uh, next is FBN Quest Securities. FBN Quest Securities with 95 billion in value. Uh, year to date. Uh, so they are number nine on the list of top 10 
performing stockbrokers uh, in Nigeria uh, as of July, right? And of course, you now have CSL stockbrokers. CSL stockbrokers, one of the oldest stockbroking companies in Nigeria, uh, has been there for years. And uh, I don't know if they are still part of the FCMB group, but they're still part of the FCMB group. And uh, in fact, as CSL kind of metamorphosed into was was basically the brainchild for you know what you call FCMB today. And they are number eight uh, with transaction value of hundred and two billion. FBN Quest, of course, like I mentioned. Is part of uh, the the FBN as the first bank family, and so uh, that number eight CSO stockbrokers at sorry FBN Quest at number nine CSO stockbrokers at number eight, and then of course we've got Meristem Meristem uh, stockbrokers uh, is at number seven uh, with one hundred and four point nine billion um, you know in transaction value. Uh, Meristem used to be like num- number one for for some time, but I don't know what's going on with, with Meristem. It's a large company. They've got a lot of stuff going on in, in Meristem. Uh, I think they have their there's one of their stockbroking arms called Meritrade. Uh, used to use that as well. So uh, they are right there in number seven. And then Cordos Capital comes in at number six uh, with a hundred and three billion transacted for the month of July. Uh, so there goes your, your your bottom five uh, in our top 10 list of best performing stockbrokers in Nigeria. I'll uh, just recap that. Chape Hull at number 10, FBN Quest at number 9, uh, CSO Stockbrokers at number 8, Meristem at number 7, Cotto Securities at number 6. Uh, so we'll move on to number 5, uh, EFG Hemis Nigeria Limited, uh, ranks 5, and uh, Transacting 139 billion uh, worth of transactions uh, for the well, for year to date, and so that keep, keeps them at number five. And, and of course, we've got number four on the list goes to APT Securities and Funds Limited. They are number four uh, with 179 billion transactions year to date. Uh, so that's number four. And of course, we now get into the top three. Top three: uh, United Capital, a member of the you know you know. Like family, kind of like <laughs> you be a family, you know what I mean. So don't blame me now. You know they're my partners. So you, United Capital, uh, interesting. They, they, they didn't used to be like in the top ten before. So interesting seeing them creep into the top three. These guys are doing a lot of stuff, and they did a whopping two hundred and seventy six point eight billion in transaction value uh, year to date. So you want to watch out for these guys. These guys are coming strong. I don't know what Peter Shadia and his guys are doing, but uh, watch out for those guys. And, of course, number two is Stambik IBTC Stockbrokers. Uh, Stambik would always be right there, top three, for sure. I mean, they're just always there. Uh, surprise someone picked them off, number one, yet today. I wonder how this race is going to end by the end of the year, but Stambik is uh, right there, number two, at $305 billion. And first of all, number one stockbroking company in Nigeria today is Cardinal Stone Securities Limited. Uh, they are number one with 319 billion transaction value. So there you go, top 10 stocks, uh, top top 10 stockbrokers in Nigeria yet today. Is your stockbroker in that list? You want to give them a call and tell them, what are you guys doing? Be on that list. That is it for today, uh, for this week's episode of Follow the Money, brought to you by Naira Metrics in partnership with United Bank for Africa, UBA. We do this every Monday, 8 to 8.30. If you miss any part of the show or you miss any of the show at all, you can always check it on any of our podcast platforms, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast, or even on YouTube. Just search for Naira Metrics, Follow the Money, and you find it. Just follow it, and you can always listen at any time you want. Of course, don't miss any of my money briefs. I do this every week. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, you can always catch my videos where I break down stuff on YouTube. I'm going to break down this NNPC matter today. This is me signing out. Have a profitable week ahead. Bye. <laughs>